Проложуваме понатаму, скоро сме стигнати до крајот. Следната тема на која што ќе се разговара е uh, e-commerce and woman, uh, e-trade for woman, uh, get empowered and inspired. Ова, ова, овој панел ќе е потигнат, односно спонзориран, поддржан од Унктад, а модератор на овој панел ќе биде господинот Торбјорн Фредриксон. Хай, Нина, why you? Because I'm part of the panel, but we are of course waiting for the moderator and other speakers to join. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, how are you? How do you feel? I can see you change your 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 outfit and everything. That's It's nice. A good day. Yes. Uh, I, 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 I wanted to come with the same shirt, but my wife didn't let me, so I had to use some, some, some other. Okay, so other people are, are getting in. I will uh, I'll leave now and yeah. let you uh, have your I, 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 I wanted to come with the same shirt, but my wife didn't let me, so I had to use some, some, some other. Okay, so other people are, are getting in. I will uh, I'll leave now and let you uh, have your I, 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 I wanted to come with the same shirt, but my wife didn't let me. Okay, are we are we live? I I guess we are, and uh, we are waiting for the moderator to join us. But anyway, I in the meantime, I can take over his role for just a few minutes until he comes, and uh, maybe uh, give a few say a few words about the initiative, about this panel, and uh, ex to express my gratitude and pleasure to have you two here on this panel. Uh, and hopefully, I'm sure that as, as I know your stories, that the audience will get inspired and get empowered. And not only uh, the women in the audience, but also I'm, I'm sure that you will be inspiring for all the audience. So the initiative it trade for women is a UNCTAD uh, initiative, an initiative from the United Nations Trade uh, uh, Conference, on uh, Conference on Trade and Development. And there's seven of us uh, who are advocates in this initiative. This initiative was part of the E-Trade for All initiative that was uh, launched a few years ago at the e-commerce in Geneva. And I have had the pleasure to meet in person Hedianti in New York at the UN General Assembly and listen to her very inspiring and amazing story. The company is not directly connected in e-commerce, but it's amazing how you have applied and used the technologies in your in your business. And uh, then we have Nazanin here from Iran, who is running a deal platform, the leading e-commerce company in Iran. So uh, first I would uh, let uh, Helianti tell a bit about her business, because I know that agriculture has been actually uh, growing very much in this period in the crisis. So maybe you can say a few words about your business, what you do and how you applied, you know, the, the, the interesting story with the QR codes and the addresses and all the amazing things that we do. Period in the crisis. So maybe you can say a few words about your business, what you do and how you applied Yes. Um, hello, everybody. It's uh, been great to, to be part of this uh, session. Uh, my name is Helianti from Indonesia, and I'm part of the uh, UNCTAD uh, advocate uh, for a woman in e trade. Uh, hello, everybody. It's uh, been great to be part of this uh, session. Well, basically, my business is uh, I'm I'm working um, in the organic and healthy food products, uh, bringing in um, products from all over Indonesia, working with indigenous and smallholder farmers. Uh, and bringing it to the wider market, both nationally and internationally. And COVID has been both challenging, but also exciting because it also forced you to think more, to challenge yourself to find solutions. So this is actually where the digital transformation comes in. 
it's yeah. very important for us to be more effective more efficient uh, and uh, and in terms not only in opening the access to the market but in terms of also improving the efficiency of your um, operation as well as how to build the transparency and traceability of the products so this is exciting for for us actually and we've been doing the digital transformation actually since two years ago so by the time of COVID comes in we're actually more prepared for that i'm, I'm glad to hear uh, that you were you were prepared uh, and uh, i don't know if the audience had the chance to hear about the amazing products you sell because i've had the chance to taste them but let me give you Behind <laughs> yes. Uh, I, uh, how many countries to uh, to which you do export? And here we have the moderator. Actually, before you <laughs> before we go to to your question and you share with us how many countries do you export with, I'll give. Uh, it is my pleasure at your birth to give now the floor to to you so that you can take over the moderation of the of the panel. Before we go to, to your question. Right. I'm. I'm Thank you. I'm so sorry for the technical hitch glitch here, but and I would encourage you all to mute your mics while we're uh, talking uh, uh, until you uh, get the floor. So, very late. Very welcome to this virtual session of eTrade for Women. Uh, my name is Fulvio Fredriksson, and I'm leading Anka's work on e-commerce and the digital economy. Uh, we have in this panel an amazing a group of digital women entrepreneurs uh, that are all selected by the United Nations as E-Trade for Women. And I will tell you a little bit about them uh, as we go on. You have already met Nina Angelovska, who is the founder of Group MK in North Macedonia, and who is also the mastermind behind this entire e-commerce conference. You have Nazanin Daneshwar, founder and CEO of Hackfitan, who is joining us from Iran. You have Helianti Hillman, who is the founder and chairperson of Javara, who is joining us from Indonesia. A year ago, on the margins of the UN's General Assembly in New York, together with four other women, these three ladies were nominated as E-Trade for Women Advocates for the United Nations, with one main objective, to help and inspire other women entrepreneurs to play a more prominent and visible role in the evolving digital economy. In fact, a year ago, in Skopje, we held the first ever regional E-Trade for Women Masterclass together with Nina when you were still Minister of Finance. So it's most appropriate to have this dialogue here today, one very eventful year later. So we will cover a few uh, issues uh, that are related to being a digital entrepreneur around the world and uh, some uh, issues related to the COVID pandemic as well. So. Uh, I would also like to encourage any participant who wants to take an active part in this session to shoot questions uh, on the chat function and uh, and take part in the dialogue. Okay, so can I now uh, restart the conversation a bit late? Uh, to start with, I would like to hear from all the panelists why you would encourage other small businesses to embrace the digital transformation. And let me start with Nina. To your views on this. Thank you very much, Robert, for the introduction. And uh, thank you for the question. Uh, actually, I think that the answer, the very short answer to this question, if we were speaking before COVID, would be small businesses should embrace digital transformation because it's the only way to thrive in today's world. But today, now that we are living in new normal or COVID time, actually, this answer is a bit modified. And instead, we say, they should embrace because if they want to thrive is the only way. Now we say is the only way to survive, actually. So what we have seen uh, through the analysis that I was presenting yesterday is that uh, businesses that held, had physical locations and that started selling online, they noted a severe decrease in the sales in their physical locations, but they compensated with the online channels that they managed to open during the crisis. So actually, if they did not embrace this new channel to sell online e-commerce, which is inter integral part of the 
of the e-commerce and of the, of, sorry, of the digital economy, they would have noted a severe, greater decrease and maybe even shut down their business. So these businesses that survived are the ones that adapted. And we have seen that companies that have invested in digital transformation for the past few years were the ones that were able to quickly adapt because it's not something that we do overnight. But fortunately, there are like marketplaces where small businesses can easily adapt and join. They get the payment system installed, the customer support, all, all the technical uh, things are already set up. So they only need to learn a bit about how to get on board and how to, to sell. And then uh, afterwards, in the post-COVID period, they be more competitive and have this new channel. Okay, Nazanin, would you like to share your experience on this? Why should one go into digital? So, uh, hi um, to everybody. It's a pleasure to be like uh, for the first time, uh, like electronically in Macedonia. Um, <laughs> so, uh, basically, um, going to some trends that have appeared in the world. We've been talking about O2O trend, which is offline to online or online to offline trend, which has appeared a couple of years ago. And uh, looking at it, uh, Asia have actually embraced it very nicely through the different startups through the year. And as we may see in the year, like uh, basically COVID situation, they have dealt with it much better. But looking at the MENA area and Europe or even America, we have completely forgotten this trend. So we forgot to transform our businesses from offline to online. And as Nina mentioned, you know, this is the only way to survive it. I mean, we have all seen, I mean, we've been uh, in the e-commerce business. Uh, I moved back from Germany like nine years ago to even while there was no e-commerce pretty much. And now we are seeing in the main streets how the businesses are shutting down one after each other. And that is exactly showing that the trend and the government and the private sector have completely missed. I mean, we have created some unicorns in here uh, to help some businesses, but we have completely forgotten, especially the service-based um, businesses. So um, as Nina truly mentioned, this is the only way to survive it. And I think uh, this is really a time, and there are so many different startups, I'm sure, in every economy that could actually help the businesses to set up and start going on from that point on. We this model pretty much uh, quite a bit in this time as well to actually adapt with the needs of the businesses right now. Now you mentioned Asia and uh, we have one more uh, uh, advocate from Asia, from Indonesia. So Heliante, what has been your experience here? Just need to unmute. So in addition to what Nina and Nazanin has mentioned, basically we've been, um, the co my company has been speeding up uh, the digital transformation in the last two years. So basically it's a blessing in disguise because during the COVID then we are more prepared for that. Um, but basically uh, first uh, the, the digital transformation is very crucial because it's the only way you can scale up in the most cost effective way. That's that's. As simple as that, you know, it's very straightforward. Um, there are many ways for you to scale up. There is many ways for your go-to market strategy, but we have to find uh, the, the most cost effective way. And um, I'm just giving an example uh, because actually uh, in the past, 90% of our business is contributed from B2B. So of course with the COVID, B2B is dropping. Of course, uh, although for us it's not too significant because we are in the food industry, but yes, there is a dropping. But our B2C is increasing due to our online market penetration. We have our own store in Jakarta, which is our flagship store. Uh, before COVID, it was 10% um, online and 90% walk-in. And then it's now the other way around, it's 75% um, online and 25% walk-in. So um, thank God that we have been prepared for that because otherwise we are in a very uh, bad situation. Uh, thank you, Eliante, for break, bringing that up. And for, depending on what the, uh, business you're in as, a, as an entrepreneur here, uh, whether it's B2C, that offers the biggest opportunities or B2B, it very much depends. And I'm happy to hear that you're you're mastering both uh, tracks here. Uh, let me now uh, bring in the you have already alluded to it, the pandemic situation, and I'll go back to you, Helianti, first. So, 
have there been some opportunities that you have been able to seize as a result of the pandemic? Definitely, yes. First, it's because uh, during the pandemic, uh, the consumers realized that the only way they increase their immunity system is by uh, eating well. Eating well, eating healthy food, eating uh, food that also boosts their immunity system is becoming very critical. So that's why we see um, a high increase on our food products that not only it's a uh, food, but it's also improve uh, their immunity system. Like you know, uh, herbs like turmeric or curcuma or virgin coconut oil. You know, all these kind of stuff. You see a lot of uh, increase. And then second, uh, in before COVID, probably our segmentation of the market. They don't cook much at home. Normally, they cook only during weekends or. Even during the workdays, normally they don't cook, only weekends, but because they have to stay home and then, you know, they got bored. They want to, you know, to have something more interesting. So we have the opportunity of giving them um, ready to cook package uh, from our selection because we have 700 products. Anything you need in your pantry, we have it. So it's a, uh, so we, 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 we see that as a uh, great opportunity actually. Yeah, actually, you're you're uh, tempting our taste buds because you're displaying all the <laughs> the, the stuff that you have behind you there. So, yes. uh, Nazmin, how about you? Ha has your company also experienced some opportunities, or has it mainly been a struggle? Well, to be honest, like for us in the beginning, we saw ninety eight percent drop in sales in forty eight hours because, like, um, wow. like eight months ago, suddenly the government like realized what's going on. First, they didn't believe in it. So they shut down everything and uh, it was really a shock. And till today that I'm now talking to you, we are in a two weeks quarantine. So all the places are like people are in a lockdown. So it's still struggling, like over 600 people dead every day. So it is uh, not an easy situation. So due to the fact that we were dealing with 70,000 services shops, I mean, and offline businesses. Lots of them actually went bankrupt, unfortunately. And we really, like with the company, with the over 300 people, we suddenly realized, okay, the old way of the business is just not gonna work out for the time being. So we quickly looked at the demands of the customers and we saw, okay, the internet shopping is going up. The economic situation is just getting worse. People don't have enough money. They are being laid off and uh, all the great things are happening in one go. So uh, what we did it was like, we kind of um, turned the business towards the smart shopping from the online uh, website. So we started providing the cashback system um, towards internet shopping. So being the portal for the people uh, to come and see the websites because there are lots of them that they are at the niche market. I mean, I personally being in the market, I didn't know them, but they are pretty good. So we started uh, being that um, source for the people to find out and start doing their shopping through us and getting the cashback. And that have been actually very well and uh, we are now introducing the next product which is going to be a similar model but in the offline businesses in a month's time so uh, for us being in the in a discount and the deal platform to and i'm just hoping that uh, basically after covid19 crazy time that would come back but that is just not the point to talk to yeah but that's that's interesting. In fact, if I understand correctly, your uh, platform is not too different from what uh, what uh, Nina has been part of founding in 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 Macedonia as well. And, and I would like perhaps if you, Nina, could respond to this, looking a little bit ahead now, uh, and to what extent do you think that uh, uh, the e-commerce business may have a role to play in the building back better uh, from the COVID. Uh, definitely, I think that the role and for the post-COVID uh, period of the all these uh, marketplaces, either if it's uh, the group deal uh, uh, platform that Nazanin was discussing about her business, or the other other businesses that might not directly be, of course, e-commerce, but that are pushing companies and helping them adapt. I think that they're all contributing in a sort of the way they're a part of the of the puzzle for the post-COVID period, because definitely things won't be the same. And we, of course, are looking towards a smarter and better society 
because in this period I was of course for the past year at the Ministry of Finance during uh, the COVID outbreak I was co-designing and designing the economic measures of how we handle this best as a country but at the same time what we have seen is that I don't think that any school or book could have prepared anybody or any company about a crisis like this. So overnight everything shut down, uh, lockdowns happen and the, the ones that survive are, were actually, are actually, as Charles Darwin said, is not the strongest nor the most intelligent of the species that survives, but it's the one that is most adaptable to change. So basically agility and being able to adapt on any other crisis that comes, God forbid, uh, a kind of this, of this kind that is uh, taking away lives and ruining families. But any crisis that comes, definitely this one was, was the most severe that nobody could have pre prepared for this one. So the only preparation that we could do as a country, as companies, as people, is to be able to adapt better for the future, for whatever comes, to be able to bring ad hoc to uh, good decisions, have intuition, of course, and uh, definitely I think that the companies of the three of us here, but also many other companies contributed, especially to small businesses, but as well to many other companies to towards building back better for, for the post-COVID period. Now companies would have a new channel, for instance, to sell, and they, they will have the access to new customers and new markets in the post-COVID period. Now, it, they're compensating for the offline sales, but in the future, this will be an additional stream for them to, to scale up and improve their revenues overall. Yeah, you know, that, that is, of course, uh, part of the reason why we are, from the UN side, trying to uh, leverage your expertise and skills and experience to get more uh, digital entrepreneurs to, to jump on this bandwagon. And I think what you have all been saying is that uh, despite the difficulties uh, of the COVID pandemic, if you are more digital, you have uh, higher agility and you will have a greater chance to actually cope with the challenges, but also seize opportunities. Uh, because there are winners and losers here and those that are not so digital, they face a much harder situation. Uh, and uh, this is, of course, not just between firms, it's also globally between countries. And we are, we are recognizing that a lot of countries are struggling uh, to seize the digital opportunities simply because they are not as uh, uh, digitally ready yet. Uh, let me, uh, I mean, you're all very, very uh, competent, successful women digital entrepreneurs. And I would just like to ask if you could share some of your experiences uh, from being a woman in, in, uh, in your digital uh, entrepreneurship journey. So maybe I can turn to you first, Nazanin. You're working in Iran, and I would like to uh, ask you to share with us some of possible difficulties that you have had to overcome along your journey as an entrepreneur in your country. Uh, and is perhaps especially if you see that some of those challenges, maybe opportunities as well, have been related to you being a woman? Uh, well, I mean, the, the Iran economy is actually quite weird. I mean, when I moved back, like I studied in Iran uh, and I studied engineering, masters of IT. Um, we Over 50% of the engineering students are women, actually, interestingly enough. But when it goes to the companies, you know, the, there is a high number of people, like basically unemployment rate in women. And there is only 3% of the women that they are self-employed or they're an uh, I mean, entrepreneur or any kind of like independent business. So basically the career and the work path is not very brilliant or basically open. And this, that this is mainly due to the culture, like culture of the, basically the families in here that they want to have nice daughters, nice wives, nice mothers. And, they, you know, that's just a long story. And I've been fighting against it forever. But the reality is just like when I moved back nine years ago, the, the situation was way more difficult because still nobody could have believed like a woman could run the company. I mean, my own experience in the first two years was the fact that I was going to the meetings to sign the deals. And they were liking ideas. And they were the manager. And I was always like, I am the 
manager and they were just like look just don't waste our time just go and come back with the manager and i was taking my dad as a manager introducing him next and next and that was how we basically cracked the economy and it started working and then we got basically we got appreciated by the government and the story just started but then the last of years at least through all this digital transformation and the community and the startup community you know there are more successful um, female entrepreneurs that are coming and lots of stories to be said and lots of role models i still believe that there are a lot of difficulties to be passed by but uh, at the same time i believe you know either you find a way or you make a way and i think like um uh, in iran and our region is one of the best places that uh, is an emerging market. We still don't have like that because of all these crazy sanctions. We don't have that many competition from international world. So still there is a very big opportunity, like basically um, to still continue and uh, basically the, grow a business. Just to give you an idea that Uber a kind of a business in Iran, which has nothing to do with Uber, obviously, it's a local one, has the second number of rides in the whole world. So you can imagine how people are transforming, like the food delivery business is having over 120,000 orders per day. And the Amazon-like business in Iran, which is called Digicala, has over 100,000 uh, orders to be delivered as well. The digital economy is actually uh, growing quite well being uh, disconnected from the whole world. But, um, I mean, uh, in fact, uh, the women and entrepreneurs are actually growing. I mean, the, uh, the government them now have got different ministries to help the women grow. And um, yeah, and we just had the ICT union election uh, last week for the first time. Uh, one female entrepreneur, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately being me, has been chosen to the head of the board of the whole country. So that is that is all showing, like basically, the different, the different approaches being taken by the government as well. Wow. Well, that sounds like a great example. Now we first had the minister of finance uh, as one of the advocates, and now we have uh, one of board member from uh, from from Iran. So we look forward to hearing more about. In, in, in the coming weeks and months. Uh, we have, uh, oh, we are running late in the conference and, and we should make the most of the time. I would like uh, to ask Nina and Helianti, maybe starting with Nina, uh, to just share your experience this first year as uh, E-Trade for Women Advocates. And perhaps more, more specifically, I would like to ask you, uh, you know, for people outside, what does it meant being uh, an advocate and uh, do you feel that you in any way have contributing to empower some more women digital entrepreneurs in this journey for the first year? Nina, if you can start. I hope so. Uh, that's the goal and that's the, that's the mission, I guess, to empower as many women uh, to, to embrace uh, e-commerce and digital um, and technologies. But I think that, um, first of all, uh, let me express my honor to be one of the advocates. It's been a pleasure because I think that recognitions are always a great source of motivation. I've been working very hard for the past 10, 11 years. And when recognitions like this come, it's like a reward that you see that your work is being recognized and everything that what you do. Of course, we, we do what we love, all of us here, I guess, and it, we do it with passion. And that's the only, I heard many of the speakers mentioning the word passion. And this role is to inspire more women to find their passion here in this field. Uh, because did you, let me just uh, be honest and tell you that they say there is a saying that says, find the, the, the job that you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Uh, that's not so, so much true because once you find what makes your heart sink and what the what you're passionate about then you will work super hard all the time and you'll get many things personally and you will set no boundaries but you will enjoy it and once it's once your work will be recognized it's definitely a source of even great to do even greater work so i think you mentioned in the introduction we did the first master class here uh, in north macedonia and i'm happy to see that it was continued and all the, all the advocates in other countries have organized their master classes 
We had the pleasure to have around 50 women from the region here. I've had the chance to hear their amazing stories. And I think that this is, this is also uh, like a reward for us as well to see how we have made an impact maybe, how we have inspired other, other women. I've, uh, I, have, I did some mentoring over the past few years and I got lots of messages which are an inspiration to me as well, how people have changed, how women got inspired, what they did, uh, how they succeeded. Uh, but uh, I think that, um, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it's not very tangible to measure the contribution. It's not like on a scale of one to five, how many have you contributed or inspired women. But all these little things are something that leaves uh, a mark. Uh, and then it's difficult to say what was the key thing for them to make a change or to maybe become better and successful. But uh, definitely, I really hope that we do contribute and that I think that role modeling is, of course, one of one of the ways because other women can and girls can see somebody who has walked the walk and that it's something that can be done and it can be fun all the way All the challenges are fun. And simply we need to find the challenges we love, we love solving and to keep keep uh, keep doing that. For, for many for many years and don't expect the challenges will end. Just find a way to turn them into opportunities. Well, yeah, I remember the, the first master class in Ethiopia was for I think five or six countries in the region. And uh, the reviews from uh, from the participants there, I can clearly uh, testify that you were a great inspiration for many of the women digital entrepreneurs that were attending. So great and thank you so much for all your contributions. Helianti, you just had a, a regional masterclass as well, but of course that was during COVID, <laughs> so it couldn't face the face, but uh, it was more similar to what we're doing right now. What, what has been your experience this past year? Um, okay, so first, um, I have a different starting point from Nina and Nazanin because uh, both uh, have this digital platform as the business itself. Well, in my case, my business is a conservative business as usual business. So I think what I contrib contributed the last one year is that uh, to make sure that the whole process of digital transformation is not as intimidating as it looks, uh, that it's more relatable to anybody with any type of business, whether you have a strong digital background or no. So I think the fact that I started from non and then we managed to excel very quickly. It just indicates that it's a um, that basically digital economy, digital transformation, has democratized um, the access um, of opportunities for everybody. So I think that, well, I hope during the session also the master class uh, because we've seen that a lot of the participants is basically doesn't have a digital background. Uh, they're basically either in the garment industry, designs, uh, food, you know, different kind of things. So I think this is what the, what the message I want to send to all of those with different type of businesses that at the end of the day, it's it doesn't matter what business you're in. But the digital transformation is basically um, helps you to thrive, to scale up, and to survive. You know, so there are many elements uh, to it. So uh, yes, yeah, so I think uh, my master class was the first one that is actually doing uh, based on the uh, uh, online basis, and and luckily, actually, a few months before that, um, I've been shifting also my rural entrepreneurship class uh, from physical to online. So actually, that was the first time since the COVID that we ran the whole one month class during online. And first, I, it was daunting for me because our class is actually involved food processing, you know, food processing, food preservation, and you know all the things that actually you should be physically there. Mm. But eventually we managed to turn it into like video tutorials, you know, like a hands on uh, pairing and it works. So that's why yeah. uh, when we have to do the e-master class uh, for this uh, uh, OMTAD, I said like, OK, we can do it, you know, <laughs> we, can, yeah. we can pull it off. you know. <laughs> and you could. You did it so well. And it was also a great success. And thank you so much, Helianti, for that. And I think you, you make an important point. You're coming in from food production, from agriculture. And even there, digital transformation is necessary and it can make a, a huge difference. So, you know, 
all three of you, uh, I would like to end with a question from the audience, actually. And um, uh, we have five minutes left, so I will ask you again to be very brief in your answers. The question is, and I'm not sure who has asked it, but someone in the audience has asked, uh, what's your opinion? Do you think companies will continue to transform digitally at the same pace, even after the pandemic? Nazanin, do you want to start? Yep. So, well, basically, I think a lot has been changed during the uh, pandemic. I mean, the behavior of the people, the habits that we have, and the way that we look at the things. So I think this digital transformation is also part of it. Now, I could see it in my grandmother, that she is more looking at I don't know, Instagram, all sorts of websites to look and find different stuff. And I think that kind of a look in different generation is going to impact the businesses. And I think it also uh, happens to have the direct effect on the business owners. And I think that they, they are and they will take the digital transformation much more aggressively and much more important as Helianti as a business owner actually mentioned. So I would, I would assume, yes, that would, that would actually uh, take us to a greater deal in a digital transformation, more startups, more sophisticated probably technologies, and more of the way of uh, basically bringing the offline and the retail uh, behavior of us online. Helianti, what's your feeling? Has uh, the um, impetus for more digitalization or will it start uh, fading away after the pandemic? I don't think so because it becomes a habit. The pace because you know, pandemic is too long. It has been running for nine months. When you go through that crisis in such a long time, then whatever the adaptation you do is now become the habit. And I don't think we will we will slow down. All right, Nina, I, you have to say on this. Yeah. I think uh, I have a slightly different opinion because I think it depends on what things. So, for instance. 20% uh, of Macedonians started paying their bills online during COVID. Uh, so I think these kinds of habits, once you see the, uh, that it's easier, uh, they will probably stay. But when it comes to increases that e-commerce noted, in, uh, like uh, increasing grocery shopping, you know, people and systems have the natural tendency to go back. And this new normal, now we're doing these things, people are doing these things because they don't have other choice. It's not because they chose to, but it's because everything shut down, it's because their health is in danger. And I think that uh, probably time will tell how much of this growth uh, will stick. I hope that definitely it won't back, go back to as it was, because we've noted a five-year increase in just three uh, COVID months in e-commerce when we're speaking. So definitely the, this crisis has made a change. But I think that the, um, to answer more precisely the question from the audience, if companies will continue with the digital transformation with the same pace, I think that most of this adaptation and change will stick because they will see the benefits because now they have to. And once they see that many things are easier and better done digitally, uh, I think that once you go digital, you, you don't go back to, to, the, to the old processes. So it's a bit tricky and different depending on which angle and what, what things are we, are we talking about. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the responses and insights. Time flies when you're having fun and it's already time to wrap up this session. Uh, to Nina and Nazanin and Helianti, a big thanks for sharing your insights and experiences and for your continuous commitment to making women more powerful drivers of innovation and inclusion in the digital economy. I would also like to thank the Macedonian E-Commerce Association for hosting this conference and for organizing this session together with the E-Trade for Women initiative. And finally, to all of you who have listened in, all your participants, thanks for attending and for your questions. I hope to stay in, stay in touch and to interact with you soon again. Have a pleasant continuation of the conference. This session is closed. Thank you very much.